that Karen? Good morning. It's me. What? Wait, how do I do this? Okay, I'm, I'm going to just ask everyone to mute. Hi. I will. I just want to. Hi. It's 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 wonderful to see you, hear you, Claire. Okay. Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday service, which today is held online only. We know, though, that as we gather together, when in person or virtually, that spirit is always present, present within us and moving amongst us, uniting us in a common bond of love. I'm Reverend Karen, and I'll be doing the service today. We move now and into a place of gratitude for the ever presence of spirit in our lives. And we join together in prayer for healing, for those watching and for all those who need our prayers. Great divine healer, you are woven around us like a shawl that invites us to rest. Our bodies are made strong our minds enlightened and our spirit renewed. Be with our healers today as they channel your gentle, loving strength. May all who are in need of healing be enveloped by your healing love, healed and forever blessed. At this time, we ask our healers who are joining us online to prepare themselves. Everyone watching, please close your eyes, take a deep breath, and welcome all in spirit who assist us in sending healing to everyone in need of healing. And as we prepare, let's remember that we all add to the healing energy with our positive intentions and thoughts and love. Imagine now a beautiful healing vessel that holds the names of all those requesting and needing special healing. Everyone can add the names now of those who need special healing intentions. And this you can do quietly and silently to yourself because it's the intention, the words in your head that bring a lot of strength to the healing. With our eyes closed, we send healing to everyone joining this service online with a meditation for world peace. Just listen to the words. I am the commanding consciousness presence that demands peace and harmony in every area and aspect of my life, in my work, in my play, with my friends and family, and within my inner being, the peace and harmony of God is active, present, in full operation and complete manifestation. I send this peace out to every leader in every country and all who make decisions that bring change into our world. I know that the peace and harmony of God is active in every person, everywhere. I see this country surrounded by light as more people choose to meditate on peace. I surrender to spirit the ways in which this will happen. I lay aside my limited opinion as I place my trust in the infinite wisdom of God. 
knowing that peace and harmony awakens in the hearts, minds, hopes, dreams, and wishes for everyone. For the peace and harmony of God far outweigh any desire for disharmony or destruction. Wherever there is God, peace and harmony is active, present, and in full manifestation. And so it is, as this congregation pours forth love and peace for all. And that concludes the healing portion of our service. Today's reading and homily will be given by me. I have two very short readings, but the first one is uh, really an old campfire song. I'm going to begin. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around are warmed up by its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread God's love to everyone. You want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I've found. You can depend on God. No matter where you're bound, I'll shout it from the mountaintops. I want my world to know the God of love dwells within me, and I want to pass it on. And the second short reading is from Roots of Buddha Psychology by Jack Cornfield. We all have, without exception, a very deep, longing to give, to give to the earth, to give to others, to give to the society, to work, to love, to care for this earth. That's true for every human being. And even the ones who don't find it, it's because it's been squashed or somehow suppressed in their life. But it's there to be discovered. We all long for that, to find a way to love or a place to work and give of our heart and our being. Good morning again on this very snowy Sunday morning. It's the first Sunday in February and February is a month where our thoughts frequently turn to love. Some of us want to find that special Valentine, and yet others are looking for something else, perhaps something deeper, something more. And we continue that search for what we love, what will ignite that passion within us, because what we're all looking for is meaning, purpose in our life and a feeling of accomplishment, getting more in touch with the love that dwells within us, being in that special place of grace, living always in that moment of communion with our divine self. And you know, during the course of my weeks with what I'm doing, it's not unusual for me to be asked by someone if they have the capacity to heal or to be a medium. I'm also often asked, well, where do I go from here? They want, people want to find their passion, that which ignites the divine within them. That's what our passion is. What's my passion? Will I make it if I try to be an artist or a musician? or a teacher, or an engineer, or a cab driver, or a mechanic? The answer to that is that old path, do what you love and you won't work a day in your life. But more than that, put love in all that you do. 
understand that all of your gifts, all of your abilities, whether you can work at great height, heights building skyscrapers, or been given the bravery to run into burning buildings, the scientific genius to discover cures for disease, new diseases, or perhaps alternative energy sources, all of these abilities are the divine working through you. And this is giving. This is a service for you as an individual and all of us collectively as the one are a gift. You are a gift. You are the light. And together, we're all the gift. And we're all the light. You know, we talk about the, what professions have a calling. The ministry has a calling. But we all have a calling, a yearning from our hearts that's put there by the divinity within us. And that yearning is born in a state of gratitude and love. And it leads us to be compassionate and gives us a desire to be in union with other people. This desire is born from love and also freedom, not an overt or covert coercive obligation to serve because of threats of hell or karma, bad karma or guilt. These are fear-based and we're gonna just throw them away. When the desire to serve comes from the joy within us, the expression of our passion, which is an expression of the divinity within, that joy naturally and unconditionally radiates out to everyone because it's born from love and gratitude. And that's universal. We all reincarnate to grow spiritually each in a different way, but that's why we come to continue our growing in concert with others, not to sit in, a way in, our, in our rooms and pray just, but to come into relationship with other people. And it all begins in our home, within our close personal relationships. We learn to respect and honor ourselves and respect and honor other people. We learn how to recognize conflicts, not pretend they don't exist, and then we learn how to resolve them. Love heals hurts with gentle, kind words and deeds. And that's so good to know because none of us are perfect and we all make mistakes that, that sometimes hurt people, but to move out of that mistake with love is so important. As we move out into the world, we understand that some of the most transformational acts of giving grow out of our natural God-given talents. For when we're doing something that we love and we're able to truly live our passion, what we're doing is creating a positive energy that raises our own vibration and the vibration of those around us. Think of the songwriters, just beautiful words and, and uh, the poets and inspiring words and the garage mechanic who, fix, who can fix your car and has one of those intricate mechanical minds that can fix anything and get us around. The florist who brings beauty in the world, the tech professional who just kind of brings us into the new age. When all of these people are doing what they do best and putting love into what they do, their positive energy is healing. It becomes contagious. And when they use these gifts to help others, these God-given gifts are God-given acts of grace. This is what grace is. We can create grace in our own life and for other people. The divine within and the divine moving among us.
When I read my Facebook page, I see so many people post signs of inspirational messages, messages that must resonate with them. Words of hope and inspiration, encouragement. And these words are healing and people want to share them, passing them on, healing, serving others, born from gratitude and love. It's that passing on again. People will post, and so the sharing continues on and on, an expression of love shared, a desire to pass along an experience of divine inspiration and love. Simple things, little things. This is the ripple effect. So when a pebble is dropped in a body of water, the ripples that it creates are infinite. They go on and on and on. I was in a mall a while ago and a lovely vibrant woman approached me and she had her two grandkids in tow. And she handed me a beautiful rose and asked me if I was willing to accept it. It was her 65th birthday and in gratitude for her life, she was doing random acts of kindness. And she asked me if I took the rose to pass it along. And I did. And there's the ripple effect again. Little acts of kindness. We're light workers. And in so being, understand that every positive act, every positive act of service heals. Every positive thought, every positive deed, born from gratitude and love grows and raises our vibration and that of the universe. Just hold the door open for someone. Help a person take something down from a, a shelf in the market. Little things, that's how we can give too. Little things are what life is made up of. So we move in gratitude and love from our interpersonal relationships to our communities, to the world, bringing light and love and transformational energy in our thoughts, words, and deeds to raise our vibrations and heal ourselves and those around us and the planet. Now I'm going to end just with the words of the simple little camp song. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around are warmed up and it's glowing. That is how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread God's love to everyone. You want to pass it on. So together, let's create a beautiful 2021. Much love to everyone. Thank you. We now come to the prosperity portion of the service. And as we can't collect in person, we ask that you go to our website to make a donation online or mail one in. We still have a mortgage to pay and a building to maintain. And of course now, plenty snow removal. So a huge thank you to those who are continuing to donate at this time. And thank you, know, just that, that thanks for supporting this church. Okay, and now it's time for announcements. So all of our classes, events, and healing circles are now online in Zoom. The brochure, it, with all of our classes and events can be accessed on our website. All classes and events, unless otherwise noted, begin at 7.30 p.m. <clears throat> okay, so um, this week on Tuesday, we have Ask Spirit Anything with Reverend Norma. And um, Reverend Norma is a, a wonderful trans channel. So it's a, it's a great way to spend an evening. We also, on Wednesday evening, we have our healing circle. 
And on Sundays, every second and fourth Sunday, we have the Course in Miracles discussion group. And that's at 12 p.m. after church. Okay, thank you. And um, now we would normally have messages, um, but um, I'm not going to be doing messages, but I, you know, I did have a request from one person. So I'm going to, um, and that was Tanya. Are you still here, Tanya? Yeah, somewhere. So yes, I'm here. Mm -hmm. So you, you requested a message. And um, I have to say, uh, Tanya, when you requested that message, I, I felt mother come in, mothers in spirit, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And would you know that there was, um, she, she just has a countenance about her. She seems very reserved and there's an elegance about mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she comes today and she talks about how her life was very confused, very confusing. Um, there just seems to have been issues that she was continually dealing with. Um, so she, was, she had a lot of challenges that seemed to be existing within. Can you understand that about her? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna bring you a message. And that message from mother is, um, that it's just so important to remove the drama from our lives and to find that place of peace. And when we find it, whether it's with someone or not, um, it's something that we should embrace. And um, I'm not feeling that she was a big huggy, but when she says that, I feel like she embraces you. So love from, from mother, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to move now into the meditation. So um, just kind of relax. And this is, you know, this is a way of calling spirit in too. Um, and so, so just relax and close your eyes and just become aware of your breath every inhalation and exhalation. Just relax. Just feel your muscles soften, your shoulders drop. And just become aware of the, your breath just for a moment. Now take your focus down to the level of your heart. And allow yourself to see a beautiful pink rosebud there. At the moment, its petals are closed. See it, and it's as yet unformed beauty. Gently observe it. And when you're ready, breathe warmth and light into it and watch it slowly begin to open. See it in its yet unformed beauty. Gently observe it, and when you're ready, breathe warmth and light into it, and watch it begin to open. Softly, the petals start to move, slipping over each other, opening the bloom, opening and opening to its full beauty. A wonderful, fully formed pink rose. Now it's at its peak, a spectacular bloom in all its glory. 
though all of its stages of development were lovely. It's at its fullest blooming that it achieves perfection. The fully formed magnificent flower. See this rose as a metaphor for your own blossoming. Now you are achieving your full bloom. Now you are at the peak of your blooming. You are like the rose, fully opened, fully yourself. You and your full flowering are a gift to the world. Hold the beauty. That's a great gift from God. Hold the magnificence. You are the gift. Allow yourself to enjoy the feelings. Savor the moment. Embrace the magnificence of your maturity, your full flowering. Enjoy. Now from the center of the rose, allow a beam to go out to whoever you wish to send it to. Healing, cleansing, pure love. Notice that as you send it out, you are healed by it also. Let it shine where it's needed most. Let it heal wherever it falls. This unconditional love heals the world. It's your never ending gift to the world. Now allow the beam of love to gently cease though it will heal you forever. Hold on to the rose, but enclose it in your heart now. Smile. Feel yourself healing. Enjoy. Now gently bring your focus back to your physical body. Feel your feet on the floor and your back against the chair. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Move your finger, fingers and wiggle your toes and your back. And our closing prayer, we're going to close now. And it's just go now in peace. Go now together. Be sure once again, God's love has no end. And you are its beginning. Have a beautiful week. And thank you for just all coming together and becoming one.